Okay, so we're doing an M4 review. All right, look, look, look. We're about to get into a real sweaty gun. Have you ever used the ACR in Modern Warfare 3? Well, we're about to get into something sweatier than that, like putting a suppressor on that same ACR. Every single one of you is running a suppressor ACR, like you're fucking good or something. You know? Can you have one? You know very well that M4s are not my thing. I like to believe that any new M4 style rifle should have something special about it and not try to be like another M4. That's not very competitive to me. But I can't ignore that a lot of my weapon choices have their fair share of shortcomings. Taking that for what it is, G&G &G sent me this shorty. They call it the SR30 and they are very proud of these licensed trademarks by Knight's Armament. It feels pretty solid, but trademarks don't mean much to me if it can't perform. Furthermore, I take a polymer-made GNG combat machine if it can outdo a higher value rifle in range, accuracy, and reliability. So today, thanks to GNG, we'll check out what makes this new SR30 so special, if anything. I've handled this rifle, read up on it, and even played with it, so I think I'm ready to tackle this new release that's creating a small buzz for itself. And if you end up liking this rifle, then be sure to check out the description for all the links you'll need to get one for yourself. Or you can go ahead and check out another review on another GNG release by Jet the Desert Fox at Desert Fox Airsoft. Now, not all too many airsoft manufacturers have a more recognizable box than GNG. It's a look that I can spot in any store and shelf. It's completely covered in GNG brand colors and it bears the specs of the rifle inside, but opening it up is where the real prizes can be found. First, we get a really great manual that goes over the other variants of this rifle, the controls, the internals, a parts breakdown, and so much more. I'd recommend that you hold on to this manual just in case if you have any further questions after this review. Then we have the common cleaning slash unjamming rod that most of you should know how to use. And then we have this old school ramrod speed loader. Why this speed loader is in this box with a relatively high end rifle is beyond me. I'm not hating on GNG or anything, but why include this loader when you can just include one of these? Who's even throwing these into AEG boxes nowadays? Then we have a special 90 round mid cap metal magazine with an extended follower, which is always nice. More on this magazine later. Then we have the rifle itself. Taking the SR30 out of the box, you'll immediately feel the weight. This is not a light rifle for its size, even being heavier than some gas pullback M4s its size at 5.5 pounds thanks to its dense metal body and thicker G2 gearbox inside. A gearbox that I've really grown to love with just this rifle alone, but more on that later in this review. Starting at the end of the barrel, we have a standard birdcage style flash hider made of plastic which sits on 14mm counterclockwise threads. I'm a little surprised that this flash hider was made from plastic, especially on a more high-end rifle. But I guess that saves money. The same could be said on my GNG M14s as I really wish it had a full metal device at the end of its barrel, but whatever. The one piece outer barrel is wrapped in a fully licensed free float KAC M lock rail. This rail is super solid. It never budged, wobbled, or anything while handling the SR30 on or off the field. I also like the addition of the metal quick detach sling points on each side of the rail. You'll even see more of these points just behind the lower receiver. All these sling points work very well and you shouldn't worry about them coming undone with a proper QD sling point. Up top, we do get a pair of Metal Knight's Armament flip-up sights on the near seamless Picatinny rail going over the upper receiver and M-lock rail. The rear sight can be adjusted for windage, while the front sight is only adjustable for elevation accordingly. The sight picture with the large rear sight aperture is very clean and should work great for anyone without bulky lower face protection or a full face mask. But if you still don't like these sights and flipping them down just won't do it, then just grab a flathead screwdriver and just take them right off the rail. Just be sure that you do me proud and put a scope big enough to make everyone think that you're a complete idiot. You ever see one of those huge EOTechs they put on LMGs? Moving all the way back to the buffer tube that's actually numbered for each position the crane stock rides on, we get a relatively easy battery storage to work with. Just pinch these two tabs to pull off the well textured and rubberized butt pad, then remove these two pieces that keep your battery organized when closed, and then you have your connections. Honestly though, you can just ditch this plastic piece like I did after this review. It won't affect anything. I like the thought that GNG gave for this release, but for this instance, 
less is more to me. For the US models, you'll see Dean's connections right out of the box with a small type Tamiya converter plugged right onto the connection. Following these connectors is her fuse and then a smaller MOSFET compared to the previous SR series. With this, you can easily program your full auto selection by firing the SR30 in semi-auto, keeping the trigger held for 10 seconds, and then when you switch back to full auto, after you hear the beep, you'll have three round burst. Then with a little bit more manipulation, you can have five round burst. The beeps that I was talking about are very audible though so you'll probably not want to switch your selections while trying to be sneaky on the field. This MOSFET will also alert you if your battery is dying with another audible beep, which is greatly appreciated, especially if you're like me and you have a tendency for running LiPos to their death. Need a little bit more proof that I'm completely incompetent? Look at this huge pile of LiPo batteries that are completely useless. Speaking of LiPos, battery storage shouldn't be too difficult if you have a battery like this one that G&G was nice enough to send me. Just be aware with the small type converter on, you won't be able to adjust your stock to lower positions because of all this extra wiring and the MOSFET. I would really recommend that you just get some batteries connected to Dean's if you're looking to get an SR30. Trust me, it'll make things so much easier. I seem pretty chill about this rifle. I mean, it's pretty standard and straightforward for an M4. I do like the programmable fire selector and how tough the rail and metal receivers are. The enlarged and removable trigger guard is pretty nice, as well as the ambidextrous controls. Everything you'll need is actually ambidextrous, from the magazine releases, bolt releases, and fire selectors that is grooved on the right side to smoothly go under your index finger if you're right-handed. The fire selector feels really good. It clicks into place well and the pros just keep rolling on with the enhanced charging handle. Pulling this will expose your rotary hop-up that will adjust in increments. It's not too loose or too tight, or at least that's true for this SR30, which is good because this is where I really like this rifle. Range is awesome even without a full length barrel. With the bottle 0.28 gram BBs, I got easy 150 foot shots. Really easy 150 foot shots. And with the three round burst or even the five round burst function, you'll knock any field player down. The hop up adjustment is nice and tight and accuracy was pretty great even at these ranges. Then taking the SR30 to the chronograph with a bottle of GNG 0.2 gram BBs and a GNG 11.1 LiPo connected to Dean's, I got 330 to 340 feet per second, which is great for most American CQB arenas. That will suit this rifle pretty great thanks to its short stature, but throw this SR30 into full auto and you'll get about 23 rounds a second with that 11.1 LiPo. This thing sounds mean, and I really hate to get drilled by something like this at 23 rounds a second. Once again, this G&G is really impressing me. The G2 gearbox inside does this more with all the structural support that thickens weak points in the original version 2 gearbox design. You got a double O-ring air nozzle for a great air seal, a quick chain spring system in the back of the gearbox that sadly can't be removed by just going through the buffer tube. Then you have optional fire selector functions that gives you three round burst or even five round burst. There's just a lot of stuff to like here. Then we have all the audible beeps that will signal if your battery is low, if there's something wrong with the replica, and that you're switching firing modes. There's more on these features and the new gearbox right on the back of the box too, which is nice to see. So range is good, controls are good, the gearbox sounds great, trigger responses are spot on, and the build construction is excellent, but there's still more features to list, including the magazine cutoff, Meaning, like the MBR-308 rifle that we reviewed just a while back, you can't dry fire this gun unless you really want to by manually pressing this switch up, which will then allow you to shoot, but I don't know why you'd want to do that unless you want to really make sure that this rifle is clear. This should be a great feature if you like more realistic gameplay or milsim operations. The included magazine will make this function activate when it runs out of BBs, as you would expect, but I found that this function will not activate with other magazines since they won't have the empty mag catch that this magazine bears. I just wish I could have included some gameplay of me using this rifle, but of course, my GoPro decided to give me the middle finger even though it was connected to a backup battery. I turned it on and it would immediately die, even though it had a full charge battery on screen. I should make a video on why I suck so bad at filming FPS gameplays. Regardless, you want to be manly like me, right? Talking about some real slappy girls biscuits with some cheeseburgers in your hand. Then take your hopefully objective taking, lonely cheeseburger eating, no girlfriend having M4 filled collection to G&G's website and look into getting an SR30. Then do this kind of stuff to it. There needs to be more of these builds. I want to see two foot long scopes on compact M4s. Get one of those big stupid box mags that last about 43 seconds on the field before it completely red rings itself. If you're not pissing off the overly impressed with himself elitist who probably drives a Dodge Neon and thinks he can take on R35s with his plastic dumpster fire on wheels, 
then just say that this is your DMR build or I only use 0.4 grams and up. This is a rifle that gives you a lot of abilities, like how faking your emo phase in middle school or high school gave you the ability to get noticed by that one girl with an absent father and an overweight mother. The same girl who also thought that 1X by 3 Days Grace was the best album ever made, while at the same time being targeted by every teacher and counselor as the problem child right off the bat. They're not going to rush to break up the fight when you realize that Mortal Kombat leg sweeps don't work against the 250 pound food stamp nightmare school bus tipper who's been talking mess about about your vampire knight art. Have you ever seen this picture by the way? I'm sure that someone just made this to enrage anyone that's ever been to more concerts than just Warp Tour. In other words, yes, I like this gun. It works, it ranges, I love the ambidextrous controls, the new gearbox features, and the overall rigidity. Now do me a favor and do all this good stuff and put it into a standard M16, either that being A1, A2, A3, A4, doesn't matter. Then just back up a dump truck full of them into my horror show of an airsoft collection. I hope you enjoyed this review though. I don't know why you would. I'm pretty sure that G&G &G was biting their nails the entire time, hoping that I wouldn't drop the F-bomb a couple dozen times like a 12-year-old singing along to the Marshall Mathers LP while his parents are out to work. I'll be sure to add all those links I was talking about in the description, and if we could get closer to that 200,000 subscriber goal, well, that would be cooler than having Lil John coming out of my TV to eat some Fruity Pebbles with me. Also, we have our own coupon code now, thanks to Airsoft GI. You need to make a fool of yourself somehow, right? Well, build your next abomination of a DMR or support weapon MP7 build on Airsoft GI, then use US Airsoft at checkout to skip out on paying for shipping costs. That's free shipping with the coupon code US Airsoft. You can save yourself a whole KFC family meal with that code. Just don't order it inside because, you know, KFC is not exactly what it used to be anymore, especially if it's smashed together like a major car accident with a Taco Bell. I've got a lot more to do and a lot more people to piss off on the internet, so big shouts go to these past sexy commenters who are always showing me love when they tune in. And another shout out goes to the real homies who donate a buck or two when they feel pretty bummed that I don't own at least five Mark IV Supras. But anyways, until our next video drops from the city of San Antonio. This has been Scott Hollenbeck, and I will be sure to see you all next time. Wait 10 seconds. Hear the beep, switch to full auto, now it's three round burst. sounds crazy. <sighs> All right, it's really hot outside, but uh, we're gonna probably make some people mad because I'm gonna show off the trigger response with this guy in the only way I know how to. Why do you always give me your ass to scratch? Like, not your ears. I don't know, it's like She's doing the work for me. <laughs> she pressed something. She pressed something really popped up.